the first or second appointment during the day if you can, because I can easily see that if people pick later in the afternoon, how backups can occur, how you may have to wait around, you know, longer than expected, and that can lead to a bad experience. But if you pick the first... Hi, everyone. Welcome to Black Culture Talks. On this channel, we talk about all things related to Black culture, specifically as it relates to travel, wellness, and finance. I'm your girl, Kim, aka Kim with the Gems, and today I'm coming to you with the video that I promised based on another video that I did where I talked about getting my temporary residency for Mexico. Yes, so today I'm going to walk you through my step-by-step -step process and how I was able to get approval in 10 days. From the time I started the process to the time I was approved, it took literally 10 days. And I'm going to walk you through step by step. I'm going to include some video links and some um, how-to tutorials. So grab your pen, grab your paper or your notepad or your iPad or whatever it is and take notes if you're interested in getting your residency without all the stress, hassle, analysis, paralysis that often consumes us when we take a journey like this. So let's just go ahead and get started. If you missed my video where I talk about, or I show you in real time, my process, go ahead, click the link in the description box. I'll also um, add it somewhere in this video for you to check out, but I walk you through what it was like going to the New York consulate and we are so consumed with researching, researching, researching. And when I say we, I mean people in general. So many times we get stuck in the research process, which leads to procrastination, which then leads to us never accomplishing and executing on whatever the goal is that we had set for ourselves. So back in May, I took a trip to Playa del Carmen, Mexico, stayed for five weeks, um, loved it, loved, loved, loved it. And when I came back home, I knew that Mexico in general was someplace that I wanted to eventually claim residency in. So I came home in June, didn't really act on anything regarding to residency, but about the middle of July, I started, you know, it just stayed in my heart to go ahead and start the process. So I went on YouTube, started down a rabbit hole of watching video after video on gaining residency, the first part, part one in the United States. Now, while I do recommend doing research, there are some pointers that I'm going to give you about listening to what others say. If I would have listened to um, more than half of the recommendations that I found on YouTube, I would have spent a whole lot more money going to another state because time and time again, I heard over and over that New York was horrible. The New York consulate was the worst consulate or one of the worst consulates to apply for your residency. So I actually started looking and going to the Atlanta consulate and or the consulate in New Orleans because I kept hearing through my research that it was much easier. People who had been denied in New York or had bad experiences in New York went to these um, states and voila, they were approved. And so I really did consider it. Then I started digging a little deeper. And what I realized was, or what I said to myself <laughs> was self, um, the worst that can happen in New York is they can say no. And if they say no, then you execute on that no, you find a way to get to the yes. And so with that being said, on August 1st, well, it was actually 
July 31st. I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and um, start the process here in New York. Now, I knew from prior research that you have to make appointments on Monday. Monday at 8.30 is when the appointments open here in New York. And that is as of the taping of this video, which is now September 7th. <laughs> Had to double check. It's September 7th. So as of August, you can only get an appointment for vet for your visa application through an online process. And I'm going to walk you through that process later on with the visuals on how to sign up if you're interested. But the takeaway is be very cautious or proceed with caution when you listen to the experiences of others as it relates to their process. Because I'm going to tell you, my process in New York was easy peasy. Like, <laughs> I don't know why some people had bad experiences at the New York consulate, but that was not my story and the reason why I felt compelled to also do this video. Because if you are in or around the New York area and you are interested in getting Mexican residency, I highly recommend New York consulate being your first stop before you buy a plane ticket, before you do anything else, try New York first. The first consulate that I went to was in New York City. On top of them not having good customer service and the lady that processes the visa, she had attitude. I had some questions for her that I've been trying to call and ask her over the phone for, but I couldn't reach her, so I had to actually come there in person. Now, I will say you have to have your I's dotted and your T's crossed, and we're going to get into that next. So since I am a firm believer that time is the most precious commodity that we all have, um, I decided to go ahead and go all in with the application process. I was not going to dilly-dally worrying about gathering documents. I on August 1st, I at 8.29 was on my computer ready to secure an appointment. No procrastination, no being worried about what can happen. Just dot your I's, cross your T's, and you'll be fine. Um, so 8.29, I'm on my computer. I then refresh immediately at 8.30. <laughs> and voila, the appointment's appear on your screen for that week. I was able to secure, now I knew I kind of wanted to do, not the next day, not that Tuesday, but Wednesday through Thursday would have been fine. I initially picked a Thursday. By time I clicked that appointment slot, it was gone. Another recommendation, pick the first or second appointment during the day if you can, because I can easily see that if people pick later in the afternoon, how backups can occur, how you may have to wait around, you know, longer than expected, and that can lead to a bad experience. But if you pick the first, which I think is 830, I know that's the only one that showed for me, 830 for the week. I picked an 830 a.m. appointment for Wednesday. August 3rd, um, to ensure that I, if I wasn't the first, I was the second, hopefully things would go smoother than, you know, if it was later in the day. And to my surprise, <laughs> um, I had literally no problems um, the day of my appointment. But getting back to the process. So I picked 8.30 a.m. on August 3rd. And then I went to work. <laughs> I had not gathered, you know, all of the documents that would be required for the appointment, but I had 48 hours to do so. So I went straight into go mode and started to gather the documents that are required. Now I'm going to now read to you exactly what documents are required for the New York office. Take note though, um, each office is different. So this is specifically for the New York consulate. And another distinction between the New York office and other offices, 
In my case, I did not receive a confirmation email listing all the necessary or required documents for the application. I've seen during my research that I believe the Miami office sends that out. I think the DC office may also send that out. But in New York, you just get a simple email just saying, click here to add to your Google Outlook calendar your appointment, but no further instructions. So all of the instructions are on the website. I'm going to walk you through the Consulate for New York web site and how to schedule your appointment as well as the documents that are required. I'm going to look down as I read, but you'll be able to follow along up here as well as I will include the link in the description box for you to do on your own time when you're free. So currently I'm on the consulate, um, Nueva York. And there's an option for you to select if you want to read this in Spanish or English. I am reading in English um, and it's the visas department, the Department for Documentation for Foreign Nationals. So the first option you have is to click for an appointment. It really doesn't make sense to click that now because it's not Monday at 8.30 a.m. So there'll be nothing for you to um, view as it relates to appointment times. But what you can do is um, look at the, the application, which I will click on to. But first, a little bit more about the appointment. It tells you that the estimated wait time for an appointment can change and that you can only do one app appointment per applicant. So if there's a family of four or two more than one, then you have to do separate appointments. So clicking on to the application in English. So I have clicked on to the application and it's very self-explanatory. You have to fill out your personal information. The one thing I will also say, pay attention to how you fill out the dates because the dates are filled out, not like they are here in the United States. They're filled out how most countries fill them out. So it's not month, date, and year. It's day, month, and then year. So please make sure that you fill that information out correctly because you don't want to give them a reason to cancel your appointment, to reject your application. Just make sure you follow the, their rules exactly how it's laid out. So first you fill out part one, which is personal information. You fill out part two, which is called complementary information, which is your address, your occupation, um, the country where you live, if you have a criminal record, et cetera, et cetera. And then you next have to fill out information and purpose of the trip. That's part three. And you'll see it's the date of entry into Mexico. You can estimate that, you know, it doesn't have to be exact and accurate. I think I put mines for returning September 15th, but I probably won't get there before the 15th, but just in case, but you, you can put you know, a little later, if it's emergency, if you need to travel much sooner, put that down because that may expedite the application process. It may, it may not. But um, just again, other information about if you've ever been to Mexico, purpose of your um, trip, length of stay, have you ever been deported, et cetera, et cetera. Then if you have minors, you have to fill out information in part four related to the minors. And then you have to list all of your supporting documents. Now I'm gonna go over the documents that they require. You want to include that information in this section. And if there's anything else that you decided to include, keep going down and then there's more information for your signature. I did not sign until I was in front of the uh, person reviewing my application. I didn't want any problems with that. I didn't date it until I was in front of the person. Now I, I have heard people that have signed and dated it. It was completely finished prior to sitting down with the person, but I, tr I didn't want to risk that. So that's the application in a nutshell. Now let's go back to the main page. Um, another thing that I want to call out is that there is a application fee that in New York, you can only pay in cash. 
They do not accept cards. Don't even try to come with anything other than cash. They will not accept that form of payment. You would then have to go out and try to find cash and bring it back, but just go with cash. And it's the right now, actually it says effective January 1st, 2017, all visa applications will have a cost of $48. This is to be collected at the time of the consular interview and will not be refundable. Payment of the application does not guarantee the approval or issuance of the requested visa. So what they're ba basically saying, it's like, you know, if, you, if you're applying to rent an apartment, <laughs> but your credit is bad, you still pay that application fee if you get denied, they keep that application fee. It's the same when you apply for a visa. If there's something wrong or they find something um, that doesn't, doesn't match up in your application, then they can deny you, but they keep the $48. So moving on, we're then going to go down to the part of the um, drop down menu that applies to you. So for me, I was applying for temporary residency. So I selected where it says visa for temporary residency, click that button. And this is where you'll find all of the requirements that are necessary for your appointment. When you click on to visa for temporary residence, it will tell you what the qualifiers are for this type of visa. So you can read through that at your leisure. Um, and again, the link will be in the description below. And also when you get a chance, give this video a thumbs up. If you found it useful, you can also share it with others. Someone you know may be looking to, you know, get approved for temporary residency or residency in general in Mexico, share this with them. And also turn on the notification bells and subscribe to the channel. Um, so yeah, let's just go through the requirements really quickly. One, you have to apply in person. I think there was a time where they might have been doing online. I'm not sure if it applied to New York, but as of right now today, you must travel to the consulate in um, New York. Um, you schedule an appointment and it once again gives you a hyperlink to click to scheduling an appointment. You can fill out the application in English or Spanish. You must bring your valid passport in the original form and also bring a photocopy of the pages that contain the personal information. Let me read it in its entirety. Valid passport in original and one photocopy of the pages containing personal information, photograph of bearer and expiration date slash extensions. You also should bring valid US visa for multiple entries and one photocopy if that applies to you. You must also obtain a passport size photo. And this is a photo that they're going to use not for your visa, not for the actual visa, but it goes on your application. So you have to pay for the photo that they're going to staple to your application. And it must be a passport size photo. I went to Walgreens. I think you could go to Staples, you could go to Rite Aid, CVS. There's so many places that you can go. The post, some post offices, you can get your passport um, photo, but make sure that you bring that with you or you will just probably be asked to come back or reschedule your appointment. And remember, no glasses. You can't have any glasses and there must be a white background. Now it doesn't say that on this, but like I couldn't take a screenshot of me right here and just have this background. You have to have a plain white background. In addition, you will need either original and photocopy of your financial records or you can download and print out the last 12 months of your bank statements in US dollars. And if this applies to you, bring the last 12 months of your pay stubs to prove that you are financially solvent or an employment letter specifying your position and salary. You can also submit official documents proving the ownership of property, company, business, and one photocopy. 
If you have a retirement pension, bring the original yearly social security statement and one photocopy. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did. Again, I had 48 hours to get everything together, which was more than enough time for me because everything is downloadable, right? So you can go to whatever bank or brokerage firm, wherever you house your money to prove that you can afford to live in Mexico and the requirements are different in every state. I will put down in the description what the financial requirements were at the time that I applied, but please check. Please check on your own before you apply because things can change. It's based on the, the hourly rate. I think it's the hourly wages in Mexico. So if that changes, then everything I'll tell you today is completely changed as well. So make sure you change, you check before you go to your appointment. But anyway, let me get, let's get back to the subject at hand. You definitely want to make sure that you download all of the documents month by month. Do not do a one year summary. You need month by month over the past 12 months um, to make sure that you can have been and can, you know, remain financially solvent during your time in Mexico. They don't want you to come there and be a burden, right? They don't want you coming there having to look for a job. They want you to come there being able to help their economy grow, right? So make sure that you can prove your financial solvency. I downloaded everything. I did have originals as well. Um, one of my banks, they I still get original copies monthly. And so I just gathered those um, 12 months and packed those along as well. Um, they also bring a copy. Make sure you download two copies. Just have two copies. They tell you to bring original and a copy. It's better to have and not need than to need and not have, right? So I took duplicates of everything just in case. I didn't know if they needed to submit another copy someplace else and they were going to keep both copies. They didn't end up doing that. I wasted a lot of trees in the process, but this is what they require. So make sure that you follow um, their rules. And then it gives you information on if a company, organization, or association in Mexico is sponsoring or inviting you to the country as a resident, a temporary resident. And if they are, you have to have the invitation letter. And then there's more information that you could read at your leisure. I didn't go that route, so I really don't want to speak on, you know, how that process would go. But it's all part of this, um, the website. So... Again, you need to schedule the appointment. You need to fill out the application. You need your valid passport with a copy of the per pertinent information. You need your valid v US visa with multiple entries and one photocopy if that applies to you. Um, you need a photo size, excuse me, you need a passport size photo with no glasses, white background. An original and photocopies of your financial records for the last 12 months or download it copies. Now I know some consulates, they don't, they said they don't take the downloaded copies. I don't know why they wouldn't. Everything is online now. So that's why I'm saying my experience with New York was, it was perfect, almost perfect. It was, you know, seamless, I should say. So I was able to download my bank records. Um, again, if someone's sponsoring you, you need that invitation letter. But again, I'm going to leave that there. You also need the $48 that I talked about. Nothing's going to happen without that $48. Make sure you have the $48 in cash. I would not bring big bills. I had $48 even. Let's just stick with that. Take 48, make sure you get enough change to, you know, even if it's 48 singles, make sure you have $48 in exact change to not give them a reason to make you have to leave and come back. So that was the requirement. I made sure I put my own list together and I checked things off one by one. And I made a pledge to myself. So that's another thing. Holding yourself accountable is the biggest way to not waste time. Once you decide to do something, even if you mess up, you have to execute on it. The research will get you stuck. The procrastination is a sure way to not get things done. So 
make a commitment to yourself. Um, get an accountability partner. Um, I have an accountability group for various parts of my consulting business. I promise you, they work. So if you need someone to keep you, you know, on your game to make sure you get your goals accomplished, get someone to do that. The next thing I want to tell you about um, the New York consulate, which is different from some of the other consulates that I heard about, do not expect to get your visa and your passport returned to you the same day like I did. <laughs> I was not aware that, um, I thought there would be an approval or same day approval or denial. That was not the case. I walked out basically in the dark, but kind of with high hopes because they kept my passport. I don't know why I had high hopes. I was like, if they were going to deny me, right, they just give me back my passport and keep it moving. But just know on the website, which I did not really think applied to me, but it says, Please fill out the visa application electronically and print it. So all the information that we just went over on the application, they want it done electronically and then print it out. Applications take at most 10 business days to be processed. The processing wait times may vary depending on migration in Mexico, INM. If you are traveling to New York only to apply for a visa at the consulate, we recommend to consider a stay in New York City of at least five business days. This period might take longer depending the season. Please have this in mind while making travel arrangements. So again, I was, you know, going in expecting to get a yes or a no at the same day. And it was like, oh, um, come back in a week. <laughs> the New York office is not one of those offices that you can expect to get your passport and visa back on the same day. And I personally think it could have to do with staffing issues and just the sheer volume this office receives of everything from visa to every type of request you can think of um, that comes through the New York office. So just be aware of that. So Monday, I make the appointment at 8.30. I immediately go into go mode. I start to print out all of my financial documents in duplicate form, and I separate them by institution. I want it to over deliver. So I printed out every brokerage account, every bank account um, available. So I printed out way more <laughs> than what they needed, but I was happy, I was fine with that. After I printed out all of my documents, I then just on Tuesday decided to go get my picture taken. Like I said, you could get it done at a lot of drugstores, post office, some post offices. Um, and some people can do it themselves at home if you have that capability. That's fine as well. I didn't want to take any chances. I went to Walgreens, white background, passport size photo. I got two just in case, you never know, right? So, and they print out, I think the minimum you could get there is two, but I would have paid for an extra one just because you never know. If I lost one, if they messed up one in the process, I just wanted to have an extra one just in case. And I didn't know exactly what they were using it for. So on Tuesday, I went and I got um, my passport photos and made sure, triple checked the application after filling it out electronically, I wanted to make sure that everything was, there was no typos, everything was filled out accurately, because I think that's where people get frustrated and where the problem lies, is that they do not have their I's dotted and T's crossed, and therefore giving the consulate a reason to either deny your application or make you reschedule your appointment. And they were making sure the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed. So everything that I listed as a requirement was checked, including my financial records. So don't think they're not going to <laughs> go through. And, and if you're lucky and they don't, because I've heard they some, some consulates didn't even look at the financial records. Yeah, don't let that be you thinking that's going to happen. And then they scrutinize. So let me add this. Just to be on the safe side um, with the printouts of 
some of my financial documents. The bank is not far from me. So I just went and had them stamp it, like an official stamp of the bank, just to verify that these were official documents. But I only did that with one bank and it was the bank that I probably have the least amount of money in. But I was just like, just in case. Um, I couldn't get to the other banks. They're mostly online banks. So I just wanted to have the stamp from the one retail bank that um, I was producing records for. Do that if you want to. Again, I just wanted to be overprepared. So Tuesday evening, I triple, quadruple, check my documents over and over again just to make sure everything that they were requesting was laid out in easy to read format. I had labels on them with the month. So she just wanted to flip to a month. I just wanted, again, it to be very organized and easy to read and easy to comprehend. I highly recommend that because again, you know, you don't want to give them a reason to be like, okay, I don't have time to deal with you. Come back another day. So Wednesday morning, I leave super early. <laughs> super early. Well, yeah, I left early because, you know, Murphy's Law. I didn't want to risk something happening. I live in New York City. Anything could have happened with accidents, traffic, whatever. So I left super early, got to the consulate. My appointment was 8.30. I got to the consulate at 7.30. And I will say from the time I got there, Everyone was just pleasant. The security guard, she literally let me go up to, there's a meeting room that they have. It's it's on a different floor from where my interview was gonna be, but she let me wait up there. I did hear her telling people, no, you need an appointment. Like there were people there who showed up without an appointment. She made it clear to them, you will not be seen because you need an, you have to make an appointment. She did let them know how to make an appointment. Um, and there was a line of people like just shown that had shown up earlier than I did, I guess, thinking if they got there early enough, they would be seen. And that is not the case. So um, make sure you have your appointment or you will get turned away. But again, she was gracious. She let me wait on the second floor in the meeting room. I'll show you. It, it's actually where I have my um, paper stack, but also I took a little picture. They have a nice, cute little step and repeat. So I did some, a little photograph, a little photo shoot there, a little video shoot. So yeah, um, she told me to go up to the third floor about five minutes before my appointment time, which was 825, which I did. Um, people, you know, the, the workers were just filing in. So that's why I'm certain I'm more close I'm almost certain that the first available appointment is at 8.30. Um, and then like 8.35, someone came to the front, got me, took me, you know, to the back and the interview process began. She asked me a few questions during the process, but why did I want to move to Mexico? How many times had I been to, been to Mexico in the past 10 years? Um, I think they ask you that for multiple reasons. Like I, it, at one time I heard you had to at least visit at least one time since 2019 or 2018, but I've been to Mexico quite a few times in the past 10 years. So um, I think that was a plus. She asked me questions about my 401k, like if I had taken any money out of the 401k ever or anything like that. Um, and that was pretty much it. And again, we literally had like some jovial conversations. Full transparency, I did a um, cover letter. Um, I saw this on another site on, you know, a little bit about me, a little bit about why I fell in love with Mexico, a little bit about what I'll be doing when I get to Mexico. She didn't really care about that, but I did um, outline that I'm also a notary. And she also wants to become a notary. So we had a you know great conversation. And being a notary, you're an um, officer of the state, right? So it gives you a little bit, a little bit um, credibility. You cannot be a criminal and be a notary, right? You can't have been committed of certain crimes and be a notary. So it gives you a little bit cachet. I also supplied a background check that I had done once a year as um, a loan signing agent you have to get a thorough background check. And so I had one done last year, November, 
my latest one was from November, I want to say. I had that. She took a copy of that as well. So um, I think that just added to the fact that, okay, you don't have to do a background check on me because here, you know, I'm providing that, you know, for you. I was fully prepared. I think she appreciated that. The interview did take an hour. Now, I will say, I think she was also training someone. So that may have been why it took a, a little bit longer. Um, but at the end, I saw her staple my picture to the application. She then told me she was going to take another photo of me. And that ultimately became the photo on my visa. Um, so she took a photo. She asked me for my, you know, cash, my $48. She gave me a receipt. And then I'm thinking she's going to tell me yay or nay, right? And then it was like, okay, um, come back next week, Wednesday, a week from today, anytime between 8.30 and 1. It was either 1 or 1.30. And I'm like, okay, so does this mean I'm approved? She was like, well, you have to come back next week. <laughs> between 8.30 and 1.30. So very poker face. I had no idea what it meant. Left a little defeated, right? Left a little defeated because, and again, if you check out the video, it, I, it, it's in real time, you will see <laughs> my response to getting that news. Um, and then a week, you know, of anxiety, <laughs> Um, and I said, you know something, I'm gonna be there first thing. I'm gonna be there 8 30, um, on the 10th, just, you know, who wants to wait around all day, right. To figure out if they been approved or denied. So once again, I got there a little earlier than I should have. That's in my video as well. Um, got there, went upstairs and um, the lady I interviewed wasn't there, but the woman she was training was there. And as soon as I walked in, um, she came, well, not as soon as I walked in, I walked in, I waited for, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. She came out. She was like, are you here to pick up your visa? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Am I? So, um, so, um, she asked me to come back. So I came back and she went through a drawer. She was going through a pile of visas. And of course, mine was close to last. So I'm uh, still even more anxious. I'm like, okay, come on, come on. So it looked like she had a stack of, a stack of visas. I mean, a stack of passports like this that had visas that had been approved, I guess, within the past week or so. Um, and so, yeah, so the great news is she finally find, found my passport presented me with my um, visa and she was like, you know, um, when are you, she, she did ask me, um, no, she didn't ask me. She told me, she was like, she said, you have to go to Mexico within 180 days. That's what she said. Make sure you're in, a Mex in Mexico within 180 days to finalize the process. And so I will be. <laughs> now I will also note, I just heard that they did away with the, um, the visas under 180 days for American citizens over the past, I think I heard this last week. So now, you know, all Americans are guaranteed 180 days on their visa, but it just feels good to, you know, also be a resident of another country and a country that I've been wanting to um, live in since after I graduated college. Um, so I'm looking forward to, you know, spending more time in Mexico and being immersed in the culture and really diving into learning, relearning <laughs> the language. And so I wanted to do this video for anyone who is procrastinating, who's still on the fence about it. Just attempt to get it done. Like I said, the worst thing that can happen is that they can deny you and you can immediately reapply the same at the same consulate or someplace else. But but you can, you know, double check and see what you missed out on. And it could be something as simple as not providing the right documents, not providing providing six months of financials versus 12 months, whatever. But I want you to go ahead and get the process started and not be fearful by what you hear on the internet. Because like I said, I, I I started developing a sense of fear for going to the New York office, just knowing that it wasn't going to work in my favor. And look, it did. And it did without any problems, except for me having to wait a week, right? But had I really honed in on there, they called out that, you know, it could take 
up to 10 days, <laughs> but I totally ignored that. But you know, now you know, New York is not that bad. If you live in the tri-state area, I highly recommend. If you're coming from out of town, that's on you because they told you that it could take, you know, up to 10 days. Um, so just, you know, I wish you luck. <laughs> if you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section below. I will answer just as soon as I can. And if you, you know, are interested in signing up, you know, to learn more about the process and getting um, an accountability coach, if that's what you need, um, you know, there'll be a link in the description box below as well. So thank you for joining. Thank you for tuning in. Um, my name is Kim, AKA Kim with the Gems. And I'm looking forward to answering any and all questions. And if you want to see more about my journey to um, residency, once I get to Mexico, I'll share that with you as, as well. Just let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do that video as well. I'm probably going to wait until um, hurricane season is over to to go back. But yeah, so I'll take you on that journey as well. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Black Culture Talks. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bells. And I'm almost at 500, y'all. I am I think I'm about seven people, six people, eight people away from my 500 um, subscriber mark. Thank you guys. Thank you all. I appreciate the love and I'll see you on the next video. Adios, mis amigos, mis familia.